AEAC is made possible by Air Venturi, Hawk Optics, Diana Air Guns, FX Air Guns, Day State, Air Arms, Sports Match Rings UK, H&N Sport, Aztec Optics, and JSB Predator Pellets. And you guys know the best way to thank them. Folks, John Toller, <laughs> FX USA. It's good to have you back in front of them. Yeah, yeah, it's good to be here. Thank you. I, yeah. I swear it was just three months ago we were here. I know, but it was like nine <laughs> and it has a cut. It's gone by like that. We're going to talk RMAC, we're going to talk Pro Air, we're going to talk GRS, yeah. some changes at FX USA. Yeah. Man, the floor is yours. Enlighten us. Man, where to start? It's. It, I was talking to someone earlier, like what, what has happened in 10 months, even what's being shown at this competition, even from a product standpoint, let alone, you know, there's some stuff bubbling around. So, I mean, you tell me. A lot of stuff to cover. What do you What do you think? Uh, I think the one of the most well, gosh, I don't even know where to start this so much. But I, I, the pro air was kind of meaningful to me because I yeah. feel like yeah, it was. It's something that our industry really, really needs because we're in our infancy. Yeah, we need that direction. We need that organization, and then all of a sudden here it is at Armand. Yeah, it's uh, you know what I'm glad you asked because you know um, the nebulous of it, and, and maybe you guys already talked to someone and figured it out. But Guy Fieri was here at this competition last year. Yep. He was blown away by it. And Guy, I mean, as much as people know him as a cook, he loves shooting sports, he loves hunting, loves things like that, right? And he, he um, said, man, this this is awesome. It just Not just as an air gun event, just as a gun event, because I'm sure he's been to multiple events. And I think the idea was like, it's gotta be organized, we need to grow it. And um, I mean, FX is a big supporter of, of that, because for us, competition it needs to grow, and it needs to be done the right way, it needs to be organized. I mean, I know there's a lot of loose stuff, and it's like, I, I think it's, that we we get a lot of talk of hearing people wanting to do events, doing things, it's mm -hmm. like, it's the right time. And and I love the way the guy wanted to form that, where it's a non-profit, so it's just purely for the love of growing the sport. And uh, yeah, we're a big fan behind it. I, I, you know, selfishly, I can tell you why I like it, Steve. <laughs> I was just thinking all the reasons that I liked it too. But Here's yeah. the main reason I personally like it, because <laughs> uh -huh. I hear all the things. Like, I, you know, FX is, I mean, things aren't done yet, but we're doing well out here, right? Mm -hmm. And and I know, I, mean, I don't listen to them, but I know every once in a while, it's, oh, it's because, you know, Utah and Stack in the Deck and stuff, and I hate that, because I love pure competition. Sure. And, like, I know uh, Armac sold out in, like, 30 minutes. And hypothetically, I'm sure, like, there's 200 people shooting bench about. Mm -hmm. I bet there was 400 people that want to shoot, if not more. And what I, the idea of this, it's got to grow. Where, where supply and demand is out of balance like that, it's got to be where if 400 people want to shoot, it's the 200 highest ranked. Mm -hmm. You know, we got to figure that out. So then it's not uh, who just happened to be on the inside tip of knowing when it started, but it's like, you know, let's say you have a week opening, and, and, and talking to the Pro Air guys, that's my understanding. You'd go into registration, be open for a week or two saying, yeah, I want to submit. And then, great, we have 400 people, but only 200 slots. Here's the best 200. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure it's more complicated than that, but that's the general idea. So I want to eliminate that idea of gerrymandering and stuff like that, because, uh, you know, FX has always been a strong supporter of events. I mean, FX is really behind the initial events, right? Because way back in the day, Frederick says he always hated where people would be like, oh, FX, oh, but this gun's better. That He's like, well, let's just get a competition going. It's a proving ground. And we love that because it's it's that's what pushes the innovation. How can we get more precise? How can we push things forward? So we're big fans of Pro Air. I'm very excited to get it going. I, I know they're kind of just doing it on the fly and getting things going, but uh, oh, we're 100 percent behind it. It's going to happen. I'm so glad to have seen it. It's I, you know you can't help but feel you know these events have changed their you know kind of their culture. You know we used to be just a band of air gunners, yeah. and now you got like if it feels like every tenth person I talk to. You know, it's come from the powder burner yeah, world. Yeah, there's a lot of them. And that's what I love about prayer. It's almost like it's bringing this like validity to our sport, right at the precipice of us just going boom. Because you know, the, those powder burner guys and gals are kind of looking our way. Oh, 100%. And then now when they see the structure, the validity, the fairness, the organization, you know, the money, the reward, they're like, yeah, I think I want to go play over there. And, and you see them out here today. So that's it, kind of it was interesting, thing. tons of firearm guys, especially like in the precision event. Because you saw this year, the, um, the, 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 the purse for the precision is the same as the bench. I think in the future, I think precision is might outpace the bench. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're both important, don't get me wrong. I love shooting bench, but the precision, there's a lot of energy there. And I think it's because air guns are starting to, well, they are. Like, that's the innovation between the last 10 months. We came out with the M3 power block. I know you're going to do a review on it. Yep. The 800 millimeter tension barrels. Um, you know, uh, they're 
ammo makers are using 40 grain slugs and now you have an air gun shooting a 40 grain slug which is a very common size mm -hmm. that um, NRL 22 guys use or not just not just NRL PRS, yeah, yeah. 22 long rifle guys 40 grain slugs shooting at that 1030 to 1070 feet per second air guns are doing it so that's really I mean when that power block came out for me I was so excited because that's like a light you know a light flip light switch flip light right? switch flip yeah 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 where it's like it's matched it, we've talked about it before I remember years and years ago it's like oh air gun can match uh, a firearm but it was like yeah this 30 cal moving at slower speeds but not the same speed same shape same BC and I think a lot of guys are going to be getting to precision because they're doing these other disciplines and it's like oh I know that BC I know that hole I'm used to shooting it's familiar that. yeah it's familiar and it's comfortable and that's what we need we need to give them that confidence too, and, yeah. and the progress is such a huge piece of that yeah so. and by the way I saw something very interesting on this last the big boards going yeah. on behind us I'm sure they can hear that I saw Keith <laughs> shooting a 68 grain 357 caliber slug it was shaped like a sugar cube. <laughs> it was about as tall and fat as it was wide and long. And he was ringing that gong like, like what is that? And that, and that was your slug, right? The that's, hybrids. That's a new hybrid. We've actually had those hybrids. It, I apologize to everyone who's been waiting for them. <laughs> They've been done for six months. So we just had to get the barrel to match it. Because uh, the, the new, it'll be info by, by the time people have seen it, but the new 35 barrels, it just had a seat a little, like a millimeter more just to engage the rifling. Mm -hmm. So they read, with the power block, there was a little redesign. So the 35 barrel could seat better. We've had those hybrids. I've wanted them so badly, and they just got to the finish line enough where um, uh, the guys could shoot them. And I think there's a lot of people shocked because normal big bore is like boom, ding. And not only and that, it, but the normal big bore is like, Koo! and I guess where I was trying to go yeah. with, with you know that 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 line you were kind of traveling down is that familiarity with the 22 rimfire guys. You know, we're not talking about right. going to a 350 grain slug, and the guys as are pulling up their their arms and showing big bruises on their shoulders. You know, they're not into that. But if you can grab an FX impact, 357, 68 grain, and, and it just goes like 1020, just yeah, like boom, it just goes poop, tank, you know, and, and you know, and it's all happy and hunky dory. It just it's feels good. Sweet. And it's fun. <laughs> it's really sweet. Yeah, he was laughing the whole time. I, I actually like earlier to today, I was so busy, but I want to shoot precision. I kind of because my gun wasn't ready, but then I was like, can we shoot 35 cal in precision? Because I'm like 35 hybrid. It is so freaking accurate. I'm like, it's it's really more of a precision accuracy round. From a hunting standpoint, because the hollow point, it's not really like a, you wouldn't shoot hogs or things like that because it, it goes so fast and so light that it just it impacts things. It's still like a coyote and down slug, so don't totally. shoot deer with it. You get a heavier slug, but it, it's so fast and precise. I mean, Frederick and I were talking a little bit, it's like, that might be I mean the 30 has been the sweet spot for really heavy accuracy like the developments of 35 it's very interesting I it mean, is. as far as flat accuracy because you get the nice PC so. it, it's a change a lot of people are kind of like oh, I don't know the pellets because they move around so much in the wind but well and then slug. we were just talking about earlier then the, the 22 slugs everybody's loving mm -hmm. and I'm sure some, you know we're working on this, like some things on 25 it's just all moving the sport forward and what's crazy is it's only been 10 months our max kind of like that benchmark for me. I remember the things like I was working on marking what I knew was coming out, all that stuff, and what we've done in ten months. I mean, it's the the blazing fast innovation. Um, but we have so many smart guys working on that stuff, and we just get excited because we want to we want to develop that stuff and get it out to you guys. And I know sometimes it's like, wait, six months later, there's something cool. I'm like. It's because you guys you're spinning so many plates at the same time. Well, sometimes people are like, why couldn't you just release it six? It wasn't early. It wasn't ready. Or sometimes it was like sometimes these ideas take like three months. And I know that's hard for some people to believe, but it's like it's that quick. So it's not like uh, it's not maliciously done where we're like um, let's release this and let's hold off on that till t no. This is like it's done. Get it out. What's next? What's next? Push, push, push. Well, I wanted to ask you, John. Speaking of like you know the behind the scenes yeah. with what you do. You know, there was a look I was familiar with for FX USA a year or two ago. Yep. As as I know them, the importer, the distributor, the warranty center. Sure. But I but in, in talking to a lot of these vendors around here, mm -hmm. uh, I'm I'm getting the sense that you're working with them directly now. Can you yeah. speak to that a little bit? That's new for me. Yeah. So you know, it, it, over the years we did the sister company with Element, and there's this just been this evolution because we distributed so many air gun specific um, shops and there's so many you know the element other things that it, it, it started coming in where it's like just some good relationships of all that we, we started um, uh, importing uh, 
uh, the Javelin Slugs, Slugs from Patriot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it, it really came about because to get Slugs out of Africa, you got to take a full container. So none of the retailers could get a full container. So I, I rang up Andres and them. I'm like, happy to help. And it, it, it really, it wasn't like, a, oh, we're going to earn money here. It's more like slugs from the market. I'm in the business of selling rifles, mm -hmm. but like helping these guys get these great slugs there, it was just good synergy. And then in a similar way, like, um, you know, we were working with GRS on the Crown That stock. was the other person I had talked to. And I was like, oh, wait, you're working with them to bring yeah, the product to we, the country? You know, What's we, going on here? Pattern. <laughs> we saw, you know, they're making the stock. And I remember getting the stock. And it was interesting. I, uh, Johan was telling me about it. And I saw pictures. I'm like, oh, that sounds cool. They're amazing. But I, when, I, when I actually got the stock, it was one of those things where person, like, pictures can't convey it. Like, the, the feel of the, the eagle grip. It was like, I remember telling Johan, it's like, I uh, love the Manili, but can we just move over to GRS? Yeah. It's that much different. It's like, boom. Well, he was a, he was a, a, a Netherlands, he's from the Norway. 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 Yeah. Uh, Norway military sniper for yep. 10 years. And now he's designing, he was designing air stocks for, for right, or powder burners, excuse me. Correct. And now he's doing them for air rifles. Yeah. Now we got, got the, the crown, crown the yeah. Dreamline, <laughs> some air arms. And we were talking to them, and I think Oscar is his name. Awesome Oscar, guy. Oscar, yeah. He's talking to He's amazing. Oscar, I, I got a video. Oh, him. cool. Oscar and Johan were talking, and Oscar, you know, they've, they've really developed themselves over in Europe mainly as far as in the firearm world. And in the U.S., they didn't really have a foothold or a footprint. And we were talking, and it was, uh, and, you know, and, 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 and Johan and Oscar were talking. It's like, yeah, maybe, maybe FX USA could help. Totally. And then we got talking, and it was like, yeah, let's, you know, there's a lot of synergy because the overlap between, I think most people think air guns and firearms, the overlap is like 10%. I think it's more like, you know, 50% and growing quickly. It's wanting to overlap. Yeah. And you can definitely feel the push in that direction. And it's the same thing. So we, had, we ended up, we're um, distributing and representing GRS in North America. Okay. Oh, my phone's going. Okay, your hiney's uh, ringing. <laughs> yep. So we're representing them. And because of that, because you can imagine, like we're, like Shields of buying GRS and um, Bass Pro Cabela's. So we quickly, we realized it'd be hard to build them as FX air guns. Right. So we have a, an umbrella group. It's like a DBA doing business ah, as okay, sure. FX outdoors group. Because, you know, you think about it. Yeah, we do FX air guns. We do element optics. We do FX outdoors because there's some chronographs that don't yep. relate to just air guns. Yep. Like a, uh -huh, there's an archery uh -huh. and a, a firearm one coming. And uh, now GRS. So that's the newness I was sensing, yeah. that FX outdoors group DBA. You are I'm, a popular boy. My butt keeps ringing. <laughs> they probably make something for that, John. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll finish and then I'll... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, what about... Um, so, you know, we're at Armac. Yeah. And, and behind the scenes, I saw you doing a tremendous amount of work to help bring this together. Yep. You know, do you want to talk to that a little bit? Well, uh, I mean, we're a huge sponsor of... You tire guns, what they're doing, because of what this means to the, to the sport. Right. Um, you know, we put a lot of effort into it. We make sure we get our guys coming out, um, supporting it. Um, you know, people want to see these guys shoot. You know, they're great competitors. There's a lot of moving parts, especially now this year. The international's up and going. I think we had three houses. Can't tell you how many rental cars, but it, it, the idea is, you know, getting the energy here. But partly, is, you know, it's fun to get here. It, we take our position in the industry seriously by trying to push it forward, but also the culture, the energy of it. Like yeah, um, that's an important piece. It, so sure, important. people are going to win and some people are going to lose, but the idea is like it's so fun, and enjoyable if the culture's done right. Yeah. And, and it was interesting. I was talking to the pro guys, and we were talking to the guy, and part of it was competition is great, but the culture, and that's got to be captured and duplicated. It's so interesting. You know, you, there's dozens of different vendors here. And when I say vendors, I don't mean like, you know, shooters. I mean that the fact that the owners here, the engineers are here, and everyone's just having a great time together. Yeah. It's just so nice to see that, and uh, you know, that culture and that energy. And yeah, and, yeah, that's um, awesome. And uh, I don't know, I don't know if that's if that that's you guys that did that or Utah Air Guns, but it's a special thing. And and um, it, well, it'd be nice to see it. Honestly, carry, Utah, carry the forward. Utah guys are incredible. I think that's why we work so well together. It's the same culture and synergy. Like, it's funny, I think sometimes you go like, are you guys the same, or there's some connection? It's mm -hmm. like, we're, we both pull in the same direction. They're great partners. Um, other retailers, I was wearing this because I was old, but I love all my retailers, don't get me wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but, but they are great partners. They're great for everybody. Because it, I was talking to um, one of the other manufacturers, and, and it was interesting, they had the same idea. It's like, it's about getting more people into this. It's so fantastic. It's not about trying to get the same air gunners to buy the same gun and rotate around. It's like, no, let's get new people in. Uh, let's show them the, the beauty of air guns. And, and I, that's why the Pro Air is so interesting because I think this model of RMAC, 
you can imagine if this was around the country. Like I was shooting speed yesterday. And if there was a speed contest monthly in, in where I live in North Carolina, I would be there every month because it is like some of the funnest it, shooting experience. It is ever. next level. Yeah. It's exciting. So, I mean, well done to Justin, Austin, and all the Utah Air Guns. And, and, I mean, there's a lot of guys that are here just volunteering their time, um, but they do it because the result and, and they love the, the smiles and everyone having us such a great time. It's a special thing and I really hope we can carry it forward and yeah. I'm certainly grateful to be a part of it. Do you want to um, do we want to sign off talking about any any product anything in the pipeline that you want to allude to or that you don't want to allude to but you will anyway? Well the 35 hybrids by the time yeah. people have seen it they're, they're, we're waiting for some barrels um, all those new accessories that were announced a month and a half ago there's been a little supply chain issue so sorry it, it wasn't intentional it was kind of thing where the guns with the power block were there, but they really go all hand in hand, so we had to release everything at once, and now the, the tension kits are coming. There's been some light things on accessories that are finally pushing through. It's the one thing people are kind of frustrated with us at. I'm right there with you, I get it. Sorry, you know, sometimes growing pains of breakneck speed, but uh, that's kind of been solved. Manufacturing is way up. Like, you know, for the last two years, I think people sometimes were waiting as far as like five, six months for an impact or other rifles. And that's really caught up where people have to wait maybe a couple of weeks, but there's guns on shelves and Sweden has grown massively. I know you're going to do a. I am so excited. Like, I don't tour. know if they know, yeah, but in August, so be heading out back to Mariestad to do a part two. <laughs> you won't recognize it. <laughs> that's what they're telling me. And, and, and I've, I've, I've all read all your comments, guys, and certainly take your feedback to heart. That one will be very process and manufacturing industry focused. Yeah. Yeah, yep. and so we'll get right in there and, and we'll and bring, there, bring there, in and share all that. There is some good stuff coming. I just can't share it with you, oh, but totally there is understand. some really good stuff. I've Not been, that you haven't been doing that. I just thought maybe there was yeah. a nugget I could pull out of you. Nah, yeah, yeah, yeah nice try. I can't, <laughs> can't help you for trying. <laughs> there, try. <laughs> there's some things when we're, we're sitting here next year at RMAC and telling you about some of the stuff that happens. It's just, and, and again, it's good for everybody. You know, a lot of the other manufacturers and accessory and pellet guys, uh, for the most part, are really, really happy about what we're doing because they know this is just pushing... We're all winning in this, right? As shooters, as consumers, as business people, um, it, it, it's just amazing. This is a fantastic position to be in with Eric. You are winning. You, you you just moved on to the finals, didn't you? I did. <laughs> Which I don't I know did. how you did. That was the gale force winds. That was that ridiculous. That was the worst wind I have ever shot. In. So so here's our forecast. <laughs> it was it was tw sustained 21 to 26, gusting to 37 to 47. And, that and is, they're shooting. That is there's no hyperbole in what you said. <laughs> Like I finished my card in a dust bowl, like ran through, and I heard people shooting it. And I'm like, oh, that sucks for them. Dude, but it was the worst. And I thought, I mean, I, it was it was pushing eight MOA left, right, up, down. What were you shooting? Uh, it was the 30 cal in three, uh, like 880, and I got a pretty good card because uh, the day before I actually double shot my card. So I, I found out instead of a 216, <laughs> it was like a 206. So I was like, yeah. crap. So I, I just did my best. I'm like, ah, yeah, was all right. And then everyone around me, like including Hein Froman, who was like. I, I think you did better than most people out there. It's got to feel good. But I thought with that drop, you know, with the, with, I was happy with that car, but I'm like, oh, a double shot. And I was really beating myself up because, like, you can't lose 10 points. And... No, but nerves are such a big part of this. And, you know, talking to everyone on the line, it gets everybody. New, new, and uh, new and, and pro. Well, the warning is tomorrow I'm not going to double shoot my card, <laughs> so I'll, I'll at least get ten more points that way. <laughs> we brush his teeth in the morning. Don't yeah, double shoot. Don't, don't double shoot. shoot. Don't double shoot. Um, and I'm actually kind of hoping it's windy. Cause it's supposed to be. Uh, I, evidently, I'm not afraid of a little wind. So. <laughs> well, man, thank you. Did I forget anything no. that we wanted to share? <laughs> I think you're good. I think Appreciate you're good. you. Yeah. Good luck Thanks, tomorrow, David. and yeah. thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it.